Why contraception? The result of intercourse in general is the child has been the title of a book from 1914 and this is still true until today. I am obstetrician, gynecologist and director of the Museum of Contraception and Abortion in Vienna. We document the long struggle for fertility control and how humankind learned to limit natural fertility to the individually desired number of children. This museum is unique in the whole world. Under natural conditions, a woman will have 15 pregnancies in her 35 years of fertile life, leading to roughly 10 deliveries and 8 children who survive. Each of them she will breastfeed two years, and that's just the average. This abundance of natural fertility has been no problem or even welcome by a small minority of very rich people like the former Austrian Empress Mary Theresia or the trap family of the famous film Sound of Music. However, for the vast majority of people, especially women, but also their partners, natural fertility led to an incredible poverty and suffering to an extent which we cannot imagine anymore today. Mary Stopes worded that heartbreakingly in 1923 when she said, in the whole human relation there is no slavery or torture so horrible as coerced unwilling motherhood. Another terrible consequence of this uncontrolled natural fertility has been an incredible high number of abortions in all countries, even when abortion was illegal at that time, everywhere. 100 years ago, former Austrian psychologist Sigmund Freud worded a vision shared by most people of his time that it would be the biggest triumph of humanity being able to separate fertility and sexuality. While this was a vision 100 years ago, it has become reality in our times. In former times, people had no means to effectively control their fertility because there has been no effective contraception available. It was not until 1929 that the Austrian Hermann Knaus and the Japanese uh, Ogino discovered that women had fertile days and when they were in their cycle. And it was only during the last century that the diaphragm as an effective barrier method had been developed. The same is true for condoms, which were originally made of sheep intestine or the air bladder of fish, before the American Goodyear discovered the vulcanization of latex. The former methods of contraception, namely the condom and coitus interruptus, were entirely under control of men and women had to trust that their partners would keep their promise and either use a condom or retract before ejaculation took place. The big revolution in family planning came in 1960. It had been initiated by two elderly women Margaret Sanger and her rich friend McCormick. These two ladies were dedicated to bring a method to the world which would enable women to control their own fertility. In other words, the development of the pill had not been a pharmaceutical funded project, it had been a privately funded project by two elderly ladies. When the pill came on the market in 1960s, women had the means to control their own fertility for the first time in human history. The pill gave women control over their fertility. However, they were forced to experience monthly menstruation-like bleedings because of the artificial regimen of three weeks intake and one week pause. This artificial regimen was decided by the inventors of the pill to overcome resistance 
by society and health authorities at that time. However, now more than 55 years later, it is time to correct this historical mistake and tell women that they not only have the freedom to decide over their fertility, but also the freedom to decide over their monthly bleedings. In other words, it is time to give women the choice to have children by choice, not chance, but also have menstruations by choice, not chance. The development of highly effective contraceptive methods like the pill and IUDs for the first time in human history has not only been a medical revolution, but it led consequently also to a social revolution which was faced with resistance in the very beginning. Like doctors did not prescribe the pill to unmarried women in the first years. It took a few years until social acceptance uh, was there and obviously a lot of social norms and so-called morals were turned upside down by the, the sudden availability of effective contraceptive methods. This high uptake of effective contraception led to a significant reduction in unintended pregnancies. In parallel to the development of the pill, another revolution took place concerning IUDs or coils as they are commonly called. From the 1960s onwards it became possible to mould plastic and a huge number of very different forms was developed and tried, leading to the now mainly used T-shaped form of IUDs, which provide women with a highly effective method to control their own fertility. The wide availability of highly effective contraceptive methods had a profoundly positive effect on lives of mainly women, but also their partners. And especially the fertile period of women was turned upside down. Until the development of the pill, these 35 years were dominated by pregnancies, followed by breastfeeding and only interrupted by short periods of a few menstruations. Whereas these 35 years of fertile life in a woman's life are now only interrupted by one or two pregnancies on average. In other words, more than 30 years of her fertile life, a woman has to use effective contraception to prevent herself from unwanted pregnancies. This is a totally new artificial situation and was never meant to be like that by evolution. The discovery of hormonal methods like the pill 55 years ago represented a true revolution mainly for women but also for their partners. And for the first time in human history it gave women the means to effectively control their own fertility.